Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. Well, it is a windy day today. Check out the tree. Hopefully it's moving because it was gusty. Oh, here it comes again. That wind is really cold. It is like freezing my forehead. Look, I even have little gloves on. We are in the month of May in the year 2021. And right now it is plus six degrees Celsius outside. I'll put what that is up here in Fahrenheit. Let's just say it's pretty cold for this time of the year. So I have a lot of layers on to do this review. I'm out here today with the Bug 16 Pro. This is a new drone on the market. It's kind of large in size. It's very long in body shape because check this out. What they did is they took a Mavic Pro and they put a Peridonafi and they stuck them together and they made a baby drone and it was this here, the Bug 16. Why do I say that? Well, you saw the way I opened the arms. It's like a Peridonafi and look at the front. That's a Mavic Pro. Yeah, it's got a Mavic Pro front on it. And in the front, it almost looks like it's got sensors. Underneath, when we're talking about sensors, we do have uh, optical flow, the landing ability sensors, and you have a landing light at the back. In the front, uh, you do get a 4K 30 frames per second camera. It can also shoot at 1080p 60 frames per second. It's attached to a three axis gimbal, which is really good. That's what you want on a drone. And not only that, it has electronic image stabilization, which means that uh, if the three axis gimbal is bouncing around too much, then the electronic image stabilization should help it out and keep everything looking nice and smooth and flowy. In theory, haven't tried it, but we're gonna try it today and see how it works. What else does it have? I'm looking at it. Well, it's got a flight time of about 28 minutes. Uh, mine came with two batteries, so 28 minutes per battery. Plus, I think the range on this maybe about 800 meters, 800 meters range, because it is an entry-level drone. Oh, and it's got little legs that pop down here so you get some height. It is an entry-level drone, so you're not gonna get like miles and miles and miles or kilometers and kilometers and kilometers of range on this thing unless you modify it. But out of the box, now eh, you get about to 800 meters. It depends on your cell phone because it's all dependent on how well your cell phone connects with the drone and the communication back and forth and obstacles you have between you and the drone. But uh, I think for the price, it's probably priced properly that reflects all of those things. It's really good for a park flyer or a beginner. At least everything that is advertised at the moment. I haven't flown it, but we're going to do that now on a windy day, which I'm sure the company's probably going, Steve, why are you flying it on a windy day? <laughs> but uh, that's what I'm doing. So here we go. Let's go check it out. Now, I will mention as well that the Bug 16 Pro does come with a case, and you're going to see that in the unboxing. All right, I'm going to open this up, take out the controller, and we are all set to go. Let's open up the arms on this thing. Antennas up. I'm going to power on the controller. I have a little display up here. You might not be able to see it with this bright sun beaming down, but it's uh, quite bright and my eyes can pick it up. Next, I'm going to take the gimbal guard off the camera here so that it can flop around. And then we'll start up our drone here. Just press the power button on the top and hold it in until all the lights go up. There's four lights. Here's the sound. The gimbal will adjust itself and take a look at your controller every time and make sure you see the battery power for the drone. I see it over here on this side and the battery power for the controller. When you see both, that means they're connected. Now, on the side of my controller, there's a little switch here for GPS off or on. I'm gonna turn it to on since we're outside. So now it's gonna have to get the satellite signals, but before it does that, it's gonna want a gyro and compass calibration. So let's do that. The gyro calibration is pretty simple. You just take two joysticks, pull them down to the left like this. Uh, I probably can't see it, but uh, there's a bunch of lights flashing. Let that go for a bit. They will flash and do their thing. Oh, look at this. I already have nine satellites. Ten satellites. It's pretty fast. Now, for these drones, there's two ways to do a compass calibration. You can take the joysticks and pull the two joysticks down to the right. Or just if you talk as long as I do and let it sit here, uh, you could just pick it up and, and spin it. And it does a compass calibration like that. It just knows it's doing one. Well, here, I'll show you. <laughs> I'm just going to pick it up and spin it. I'm not even touching the joysticks, watch. So you pick it up and then you just spin it once, twice, three times. I always do four with these because I spin them so fast. And then the nose, in the manual it's kind of funny because in the manual it says put the nose down and then in another section of the manual it says put the nose up. So I have no idea what it is. These, it, it's just so confusing. So I'm going to put the nose up and we'll spin it three times. Once, twice, three times, four times. Did I even get the four? That's probably four there. All right. Now, the way you know your compass is done is you just look at the lights and uh, your indicator lights. So on the arms, I have red, red on the arms. And if I look at the back, it should be green, green. As long as they're solid and they're on, then that's it. So I can fly it now. I don't need anything else. I don't have to attach my cell phone. 
I can turn the camera on and off with the controller because a lot of people ask me that. Can I have a drone that I fly without a cell phone because I don't own a cell phone? Yep. You can fly this one right now with no cell phone. Have a lot of fun. But if you want to use the features on the app, the GPS features that causes the follow me, the orbit, and a few other waypoints and a few other things, uh, then you need the app. So I'm going to connect my phone to this. Got to find my phone. Where did I put my phone? Since I've already connected this at home, like when I took it out of the box, I tried it in my basement. I try all my drones, fly them around, everything, and I try the apps to make sure everything works. I already tried it at home. Since I already connected it at my home to my phone, my phone remembers the Wi-Fi signal from here, and it connects automatically. But just to show you and to confirm that that's the case, I'm going to turn on my Wi-Fi and check and see what it's connected to. There we go. It says right on my screen, it says I am connected to Wi-Fi, drone, 4G, whatever, 2308 CBD. There we go. Next, we start up the app, and it's the MRC Pro app. And click the start button. There we go. We are in, I should see on my screen, well, hopefully if this is recording, you should see an image of the display that I see right now, of what the camera sees in the whole app interface. And what do I see at the top left? This, I'm in sport mode. Hey, I didn't even know I had a sport mode. Cool. And I have 14 satellites I see over there and I, I see all the other functions. So there we go. And, and now my phone is giving me a heck. It's saying, hey, there's no internet. So when you see that, just click on keep trying Wi-Fi because a lot of people, it's so funny, I get these questions all the time. A lot of people will text me and say, hey, my phone says it can't find the internet. Well, yes, that's because a drone does not have the internet in it. I can't surf the internet off my drone. I'm just connecting Wi-Fi. I'm not trying to do internet. So phones don't know that. When they connect to a Wi-Fi signal, they all think you want to connect to the internet. So they're always going to tell you there's no internet. Ignore that. All right, so next thing we do, we want to start the motors. now. Uh, kids, don't try this at home. I'm standing over the drone, but just for the purposes of this video, I'm just going to show you. It's pretty simple. Little red button on here. Just press it once. The motors will start, and then we can take it up. And you have a choice when you want to go up in the air. There should be a takeoff. Is there a takeoff and land button? Yes, it's on the bottom. It's in the back right here. Takeoff button. I never use it. I just start the motors, and then I take it up myself. So here we go. Watch this. So hopefully the props don't chop up my knee. I hit the red button. Spin. We're ready to go. All right, let's take it up. There we go, GPS working, everything else. She is up in the air. All right, so our bugs is right here and I just want to show you the camera settings. So if I click this button up here, there we go. Now you should see it on my screen, little bugs over there. So the first one I want to show you is I can record in 4K or 1080p. These are all the settings for taking photos. And at the bottom is some other settings for getting the image back to you and formatting your card. So let's hop out of that. So I put the record on and let me just walk over and show you what the image looks like. So that's me standing in front. This is recording at 4K. The wind is blowing it around. Uh, does that look pretty stable? I have it in the slow speed right now, uh, so I'm going to hold it with one hand and bring it forward and it should come right at me. There we go. How is that looking? I've got, oh, I'm pushing, I'm going sideways here with it. There we go. That's better. So with the slow speed on a drone like this, you can do these cool shots like this. Here, I'll take it back to my Jeep. It turns really, really slow, as you can see, and you can fly it forward low to the ground and get these really interesting shots. So here we are flying over low to the ground going towards my Jeep. I'll just buzz over my Jeep nicely. Pan around, I'm filming the Jeep. So there we go, you can see me away over here, the drone's over there. I'm just gonna show you that I can move the gimbal up or down. So I'm gonna have it go, see if I can get it to go down. There we are. So I can look down at my Jeep and me. And uh, I can bring, well I can look down at the ground. I can go all the way down, but I don't wanna do that. But I wanna show you another cool feature on here. There's a weird zoom on this thing, and it actually records the zoom to the micro SD card. So on, hopefully my screen's recording, on the bottom right, there's like a little uh, magnifying glass. I'm going to tap that. I get these weird images, and I should be able to zoom into me. See that? It's not the smoothest of zooms because I'm doing it with my finger, but uh, yeah, so I'm, I'm zoomed in. So it's just doing something with the sensor and the resolution. I can zoom back out. So you have, it says 50 times zoom, but you can see it as I was zooming. It goes from 1 all the way up to 50. But uh, yeah, that's how that works. All right, let's bring it back to me. It's coming over here. I'll bring it down a little bit. 
There we go. How's that? All right, let me show you some of the cool features on here. Flies really nice in the wind. The bigger the drone is, the better it flies in the wind. Like, look at this, how smooth it is out here with the wind just a howling. One other thing to show you is I have a landing light underneath. If I click this button here, I could turn the light on. And I could turn the light off. There we go. All right, the drone is up there. I'll try some of the features. The first one is follow me. So on the top left of your screen, you have these four boxes. Click on them. First one, you see follow me. Uh, how all I have to do is slide to the right and it should go into follow me mode. So if I walk backwards, I'm holding my arms out here, it should follow me no matter where I go because I'm in follow me now. There we go. But it's up to me to adjust the camera. So if I'm getting out of the picture, I have to set the camera appropriately. So usually what I do in follow me that works the greatest is uh, I either put the drone way up in the sky or I bring it down. Let's see. Sometimes if you bring it down and put the camera up. So I'm gonna put the camera up and the drone down. Whoa, I landed it. <laughs> I wasn't paying attention. Ah, I got a sec, it thinks I wanna land. There we go, I got a sec. I gotta start moving here. So now it's in follow me really low to the ground. <laughs> okay, that's something to learn is uh, do not put the drone too low because it goes into automatic land mode. I'm walking the, by this red thing over here. And the drone will come. There's no obstacle avoidance on it. So if I happen to, uh, I don't know, say there's trees over here, it would go and crash in the trees. Also has reverse if I walk towards it or walking along this path. You see how it's going backwards as I'm walking. It uh, has a pretty cool follow me. So hopefully that image is pretty smooth. Looks good on my phone. Looks colorful too. So it's sending back a nice transmission. Drone's right there. I'm going to hop, take it out of follow me. To take it out of follow me, you just go in to follow me again so I just click on it again and we're out as I'm walking this way just a reminder when you do your orbits you have to set them up in your settings for the radius automatically so the drones right there I'm gonna try the orbit mode so let's see I can't remember what I set up the orbit at uh, but I'll go orbit flight and I'm just gonna go like this and it goes I'm not doing anything it starts orbiting so I'll just turn to look at it once again you have to keep the camera in frame yourself uh, just make sure you didn't make your radius too big or else it's going to go smash into like my trees that you see over there. But uh, I don't know what I have my radius at. I always find these orbits are kind of weird, but it looks pretty sweet. I've got the camera. Hang on. There we go. I'll bring it up. You can control the drone as it's orbiting, like the height and the speed. Say it's going too fast or too high. You can control that. So watch. I'll bring it up. Going way up and bring the camera down. And there's a high orbit. And then if you wanted a low orbit, I think the high one looks better. Uh, and then if you want a low one, watch this. Bring it way down, bring the camera back up. Good thing the gimbal's smooth on here. There we go. And there, well actually the low orbit looks pretty cool too. It's not too bad. All right, so there's your orbity stuff. And I'm gonna get out of that by hitting the button at the top left and selecting orbit again. I wanna show you this. I am not gonna show you it in this video. But if my screen record is working on the top right is something called headless mode. Headless mode is for beginners that get confused with a drone moving forward and backwards. They think if you move the right joystick forward that the drone goes forward. It does if the drone is facing that way. But now that the drone is facing me when I go forward, it just comes at my head because <laughs> it's reversed. So in headless mode, it just changes it so everything makes sense for a beginner. I'm gonna get close to the drone here. I don't know if my maps work on here. I didn't try them at home. A lot of times I try the maps at home and I cache them in my phone so they work the next day. But I don't think I did that here. So I'm gonna click on the maps and see. Oh my God, they do work. Okay, the blue dot is me and of course the drone is the drone. So that means I can do waypoints. Pretty simple. Okay, so the drone's sitting right here. I'm gonna do a waypoint, this is gonna be funny. So you see I have track, which is a waypoint on the bottom right or point. I can do a point of interest. In other words, tap to fly. I could tap someplace on the map and it will just fly to it or I can do the waypoint. So I'll do uh, waypoints, I click that one, and you see where I am on the blue dot? I'm just gonna zoom out, oh. I went to zoom out and I drew four waypoints. All right, so zoom out before you do that. So we're gonna do those waypoints. They're very close to me, so we'll see where they are. I'm just gonna say, go do it. So at the bottom right, you see there's a little button away at the bottom, it says submit, I gotta click on that. There we go. So swipe to the right and it will go do the waypoints. And there it goes. So success, and whoa, it almost hit me in the head. And I don't know where I drew those lines, but you can see on my screen, if my screen is working, 
it's gone to waypoint one. Well, actually, we can watch it here. And then waypoint two is probably going to whack me in the head someplace. Here it comes over here. Here's waypoint. Th now it's on three, and then it's going to four. So, depending on how much you zoomed your map in and out, uh, that's how it works. See, this is what I tried to do. Watch, here's what I wanted to do. That's the zoom in and out. But I selected waypoints before I did that, so it just it drew waypoints instead. So there you go, learning <laughs> learning thing for me and anybody else who's gonna goof up like me. So let's hop out of that. We don't wanna do any more of those. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this little drone, I'll fly it around my little area here and take some video and some photos and then we'll do a return to home. So let's go check that out now. Here comes my drone back. Uh, I don't have to do a return to home because it's on low battery now, so it's automatically returning and it's up there. Uh, let's see where she lands. Here, I'll bring the camera down as it's landing here so you can see what it sees. So I've got the camera looking all the way down. I'm gonna get over the landing pad here. Let's see, where are you coming down, drone? Drone's way up there. Can you see it? I'm gonna turn on the landing light. There we go. Do you see the landing light? Hopefully my hat camera is picking that up. And uh, here she comes down. Coming down, coming down. Where are you going to land, drone? Well, let's see, the landing pad's right there. It's not too far off. Oh, it's adjusting itself. Oh, that's pretty sweet. Look at this. Look at this. <laughs> And, wow, well that's pretty darn close. All right, so everything worked quite well on this drone. Uh, the next thing I wanna show you is what comes in the box, so check this out. When you receive your Bug 16 Pro, it comes in a box that looks like this, and inside the box is a case, and when we open the case, we're gonna see the Bug 16 and accessories. For some reason, the Bug 16 Pro looks like the Starship Enterprise. It does have interesting arms that unfold just like a parrot and naffy. Yes, even from this angle, it still looks like the Starship Enterprise to me. The specifications make no mention of sensors in the front, but it certainly looks like there's something in there. On the bottom of the drone, we have the landing light, landing sensors, and optical flow sensor. Removing the gimbal guard, we can see our three axis gimbal and 4K 30 frames per second camera. Micro SD card does go here. The forward legs do fold out and the drone does have brushless motors with foldable props. My kit came with two 3200 milliamp hour batteries and to put the battery on the drone, just slide it into place. Since the drone is such a nice looking drone, a very nice looking controller is also included with arms that pop out for easy holding in your hand. When you power it on, the display is visible in sunlight. The buttons on the controller are well labeled. If we look at the top left, that's take a photo, take a video button. Then you have your red button, that's motors unlock and start them up. And then we go to the right hand side, we have the power on the controller and then the return to home button up top, plus the GPS on or off button on the side. On the rear, we have our speed control, our landing lights on and off, plus our gimbal up and down button, plus we have our antennas, and we have the attachment for whatever cell phone you may have that you wish to fit into the holder. For accessories, we have two USB-C cables, spare props, a micro Phillips screwdriver, and we also have the instruction manuals, as well as stickers. Weight of the drone is 628 grams. 
Final thoughts on this drone. I have no complaints. It's exactly what I expected. It flies well. It was windy here, so, uh, you know, two thumbs up for that. It could fly in the wind. I had no issues with the wind. Range, um, I could fly from where I was standing here, a way out uh, in the field out there. Always I could see the drone in my eyesight, a little speck, and even when I went over the football field. I didn't push it farther than that because I noticed that as I got farther and farther and farther away, the video was getting a little choppy. And eventually what happens is if you get choppy video, it just cuts out. So with my phone, I was getting a range, I don't know, I'm just going to guess, maybe five, 400, 500 meters. That was my range with this, just flying it around here. Your range may vary. It all depends on your cell phone and how good your cell phone is with Wi-Fi. I left the case on mine. Take your case off. You get a little bit better range if you take the case off your phone. All right, so what I'm going to do is I do not know the price on this drone. I know it's available on certain sites, so uh, I'll put links below. Uh, I believe it's on Banggood as well. And if I find any other place where it's for sale, I'll put it below, maybe Amazon or something. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, uh, please give it a thumbs up. If you have questions on this drone, just post them below. I'll get back to you. And uh, thanks for watching. Catch you in the next one. Bye.